So I found all this bamboo. But what's he got to do with the Elegu Centuri Carbon? Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I've never owned or used a bamboo printer. I've never really been into any FDMs because I'm very much a resin printer guy. So when Elegu asked me to review their latest filament printer, I was surprised. After all, I'm no FDM expert and I've never really been shy to criticize Elegu when I felt it was needed. But Elegu is pitching the Century Carbon as an out of the box printer ideal for newcomers. So I actually feel comfortable coming at things from that perspective, especially as I still haven't figured out where to put the resin into this thing. After removing the packaging and a few temporary transport screws, I thought mine was crudely mended, but this sticky mess is pretty much the only bit of assembly needed on this printer. Beneath it was a cable that connects to the menu screen, and I wished that cable had been maybe an inch longer, as for my meaty mitts it was a bit fiddly. Then it was just a matter of bayonet fitting this spool holder to the side of a flimsy panel, and setup was complete, making this a very easy setup for an FDM I think. I turned it on, sat back and waited around half an hour or more as it went through a long but very thorough self setup routine, which luckily is a one off process. Now I called this panel flimsy and it is, but don't be fooled by that. Beneath these panels is an integrated die cast frame and you'll feel the weight of this when it arrives. Being so solid, it increases rigidity for improved stability and precision. The structure is then clad in thinner panels with a sexy tinted glass door and upper access panel, creating a fully enclosed chamber which can actually reach temperatures of 60 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, the glass roof on mine didn't actually fit properly, which is a shame, but no real deal breaker. The spool holder being on the right hand side is a much better choice than placing it at the back, but I'm not sure the alignment of this feeder tube is ideal, especially with a full reel. For newbies like me, all you need to do is feed the filament up this tube, past this filament detector, which detects whether the filament has run out to prevent hours of printing with nothing but fresh air, and then up as far as it will go. It's as simple as that. Coming back to the menu screen, it's a very bright and clear 4.3 inch screen with a nice angle for convenient viewing. For many newbies, the user interface may seem like you're controlling the Starship Enterprise, but honestly, it's very easy to use and these controls are something you'll get used to very quickly. For those that understand these things, this is a Core XY machine, which means it has a stepper motor on both the X and the Y axis. Elegu claims this enables speeds of up to 500 millimeters per second, though I've no idea if that's true. I can say that it seems to move crazy fast at times, turning out a Benchy in around 30 minutes. And because of this, it can seem a little noisy at times. You can certainly hold a conversation next to it, but you will be aware that it's printing. I can say that it's very easy to witness the self-leveling process, which is a million times better than the old paper leveling method any day. This is down to four pressure sensors and an automatic Z-axis compensation, which Elegu tells us ensures the perfect first layer. In fact, Elegu have made a big deal about this in their advertising campaign. And I skeptically saw this single layer print and thought, yeah, right. This I could easily test myself and did. And I don't know about you, but this has really impressed me. This is a very fragile print and it should be with a thickness of just one fifth of a millimeter. And please remember, this really is out of the box printing with no fancy tinkering of equipment or profile settings, as I'm pretty clueless on all that. The bed itself can heat up to an amazing 110 degrees Celsius, which means if you're daft enough, you could boil water on it. And it heats surprisingly quickly as it's AC rather than DC powered. Its size means that it can print models up to 256 millimeters tall. 
The magnetic plate has two sides, one typically textured and one smooth. This latter is designed specifically for PLA with bed temperatures as low as 30 degrees Celsius. But this being new to me, I stuck with the standard textured side. I'd also say that these raised corners at the rear of the bed make plate alignment quick and easy. Nozzles are typically brass, I understand, but brass wears out quickly. So Elegoo have fitted a hardened steel tip to extend wear resistance and allow the nozzle to heat up to a very hot 320 degrees Celsius. This greater temperature range of bed and hot end mean that the Centuri can handle a wide range of filaments, meeting most, if not all, of your project needs. This is also made possible, of course, thanks to three cooling fans, one of which even helps filter the air exiting the printer, though personally I could still smell that freshly cooked PLA fragrance. The enclosure also houses a camera with a built-in light that enables you to monitor the printing process through the slicer, though you'll need to connect via Wi-Fi to do this. It also allows for time-lapse recording. I will say these recordings are certainly up to the task, but they are not as clear as Elegoo suggests here. The lighting is a little underpowered for me, creating a gloomy enclosure. You also need to download your recordings from the printer itself, rather than through the slicer, which is an annoyance if you're lazy like me. But hopefully this might get fixed in future updates. It's also worth noting that in this time of clever AI printing problem monitoring, there's no AI here, and this camera is just a camera. The slicer is an adaptation of the very popular Orca slicer, and it's fairly easy to use. Since I've had this printer, I think it's gone through three updates, so Elegoo are very actively perfecting this system, which is reassuring. Using the slicer is easy, just import a model. Now one setting I do change is brim, as I much prefer lifting up a skirt than lifting up a brim. After that, you just need to slice. If you've enabled Wi-Fi, you can export your print remotely. But there's a USB port conveniently placed on the front of your printer if you prefer the manual method. But as stated, Wi-Fi does let you watch what's going on remotely, which is both practical and fun. So how does it print? Trying to keep things nice and simple, I purchased a reel of Elegoo Red PLA Plus and stuck rigidly to the provided profile settings. The USB stick provided contained some test prints and I went with the ubiquitous and now public domain Benchy. And of course, it turned out beautifully, as most included prints do. I also printed the incredibly cute Buddha, which again looks great. Then I did the Eiffel Tower, which I think came out amazingly. The USB stick also contains this mini Century poop collector. It's a very nice looking print, but if you don't understand its purpose, when replacing filament, the extruder actually cuts the line to free it, pooping out the excess at the rear of the printer into this box. After that, the nozzle wipes its bum on a silicon brush to remove residue and improve print quality. Interestingly, these features are commonly found on multi-reeled printers, and whilst the Centuri is strictly a one-reel product right Quick interruption here. As I was putting this video together, Eligo finally released some data on this printer. And yes, it seems in quarter three of this year, they will be introducing a multicolor system, which is an add-on I guarantee will be popular. I needed a new funnel for my resin printing ventures, and I'm certainly pleased with how this came out. The law now requires that everyone prints a fidget toy, or so it seems, Thus, I printed this excellent planetary gear example I found on printables, and it printed perfectly without any issues. Someone asked me if I'd design a 28mm scale chain link fence for a diorama, and I came up with this, which again printed very well. It was a bit snotty, but after a quick blast with a hot air gun, that cleared things up nicely. I also printed my Skyrim Dragon Blade and a bunch of other stuff before I decided to be daring and change the reel from Eligu to Sunlu Grey PLA Plus. 
Again, I changed no settings, but was daring and printed my ruined cottage design, which I think came out great. Finally, I've been working on this castle ruin, which has been infected by a dose of space marines recently. This model is freely available to download if you're interested. And again, I think it came out great. So what do I think of the Elegu Centuri Carbon? Like I said at the beginning, I'm no expert on filament printers. I can only evaluate this printer from a user's point of view. But with that said, I have been impressed. Setup was incredibly easy to do, with no tools or a degree in engineering being needed. I genuinely stuck to the standard profiles provided, and out of the box, with no tinkering or adjustment, I was able to produce some very pleasing prints, even with third-party filaments. Despite the flimsy panels, I feel that the build quality is there. Solid, but carefully hidden. Okay, my glass top didn't fit properly, but mine was a prototype, and even if it wasn't, it really wouldn't bother me that much. The camera quality isn't great and the lighting is pretty poor, and Elegu have resisted the call to include AI monitoring features. But for remote viewing and time-lapse recordings, it works fine. What I can say is that I've never really liked the quality of FDM prints, but lately I've been introduced to Core XY technology and I've been impressed with what I've seen. It's certainly not a patch on resin, but it's nicer now than it's ever been, and I genuinely like what I'm seeing. I hinted at a bamboo comparison at the beginning of this video, as many of you are wondering if the Century Carbon is a match for the infamous Bamboo X1 series. And despite what anyone else may tell you, no one really knows, yet. I'm confident Elegu has done its homework here, as this certainly seems to be a very impressively built printer. But longevity is where Bamboo has proven itself. So we need plenty of time to pass before we can draw any true comparisons. But the Bamboo X1 is an expensive machine, usually around a thousand US dollars, which is a massive chunk of change for most people. However, Thanks to the recent release, I can now tell you that Elegu are releasing the Century Carbon with a pre-order price of just 300 US dollars, which for this much printer is stupidly cheap. That's three centuries for the price of one Bamboo X1. I guarantee there's a lot of print farms out there cashing in on this value right now. And for a newbie to the hobby, this makes one of the best entry prices you're ever likely to see. It really is great value for this quality printer. And if you are planning on buying this machine, there's a link in the description that will take you straight there. And full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, so your old mate Fogman may earn a few pennies if you do. So, all in all, even though I'm not an FDM lover, I really enjoyed my experiences with the Century Carbon. It has a few minor quibbles, but there's nothing here that would put me off recommending this printer. All in all, it looks great, it's well built, it prints very well, and above all, it's very simple to set up and use. Newbies have nothing to fear here. It really is out of the box printing. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. So take care and thanks for watching.